What's up everybody? Welcome to The Flavor. I hope you're having a spicy day wherever you are in the world. It is Friday, April the 3rd. I had to look at my note. <laughs> and I know I just got an email today of somebody that was like, I'm so sorry, I got the day wrong. Um, and it happens. Uh, I get it. But hopefully we're going to add a little spice to your day, do some fun stuff. I'm going to do a magic trick. Uh, I'm not a professional magician. Um, but my father was a parlor magician at one time, and so I have his uh, magical green box over here, and I envied this box ever since I was a little kid. My dad would hide it away in his closet because it had all of his secret magic stuff in it. Um, well, within the last couple years, my dad gave that to me, and so we're going to be opening it up and seeing what's inside. What's up, Cody? How are you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Um and we're going to be talking about Chris Ramsey uh, and Magic is Dead. This is what I'm reading right now. I'm not all the way through it. It's by Ian Frisch, but um, it's a really interesting read so far. It's an autobiography mashed up with a secret magician society. So uh, I'm kind of digging that read right now. Um, very documentary, written by a journalist, but also tells his story and the story of magic. What's up, Jerry, Steve? Good to see y'all. Uh, so, but first, let's do a little magic trick for you. And again... <laughs> I'm not a professional magician at all, but um, I enjoy sharing some things with folks and especially good stories. So this is my one of my favorite little buttons. As you can tell, I love pins. Uh, this is my little spicy pin right here. I like spicy things. What's up, Chad, Jeremiah? So this is my Global Entrepreneurship pin. Uh, this is from the GEW folks, Global Entrepreneurship Week. And uh, this is one of my favorite pins right here. I like collecting pins. Uh, and so this one right here, we're going to make this little guy disappear here. So I'm going to just put it in my hand. All right. And I know there's no camera tricks on this, I promise. All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in this hand right here. All right. Now I'm going to blow and make it disappear. But I know everybody's like, well, it's in this hand right here. Well, I have figured out how to make things pass through material in this COVID-19 time, everybody's worried about filters and cloth, and I've been reading up on that, researching it. So I'm going to push this pin right through the fabric inside my hat. I think it's in there. Let's look and see. So if I take my hat off and let's spin it around. And there's a little pocket inside here. I think it pushed through just inside the pocket. Let's look and see. Oh, ho, 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 there it is. Look at that. So now that I've made uh, my global entrepreneurship pin pass through the fabric in my hat, let's talk a little bit about magic. Um, so the title of this book, Magic is Dead. I love the premise of that because this book was written by Ian Frisch, a, a journalist, and it tells a lot about his story, but it also talks about this group of young magicians that are kind of up and coming and that are kind of trying to break out of the stereotype of what a magician is. So you think about a magician, you know, has the cape and pulls the rabbit out of the hat and uh, thank you, Steve, very much for the applause. I appreciate that. Um, and they wanted to break the stereotype of that. So they created a secret magician society called the 52. And there can only be 52 members at one time. And they uh, give you a playing card. And then you have to get a uh, tattoo on the inside of your finger of which playing card you are. So Chris Ramsey is a, a famous magician and vlogger on YouTube. Look him up. He solves puzzles. He does um, amazing magic, and I really enjoy watching him, but he is one of the members of the 52. And so that's part of what this book talks about is the journey of Ian Frisch, but Ian, who is a journalist, not a magician, winds up becoming one of the 52, the member of this secret society. And so they talk about magic tricks. There's some other famous magicians in here that you'll know, uh, you know, Penn from Penn and & Teller and uh, David Blaine. Um, so, so far, like I said, I'm about halfway through. It's really great. But I know you all are here to see what's in this box right here. Um, like I said, this is my dad's secret green box. Now, when I was a little kid, my dad was a parlor magician. So he did 
um, l little birthday parties and magic tricks and things. And um, as as part of a ministry, he would uh, do you know some magic and church services, etc. Um, which is no surprise now that he's doing sand story around the world. Um, but this was where he kept all of his tricks. And he kept it back in his closet, kind of hidden away. And I always felt like the magic was inside this box, right? That it was whatever he was doing, it was secret and all the answers were inside here. And, I, you know, I just built that up in my head. And so when my dad got to the point where he was kind of cleaning some stuff up, et cetera, and I was like, dad, do you have the green box? And he's like, yeah. He's like, do you want it? And he didn't want it. I was like, yes, I want the green box. Like in my head, I'm thinking in all these childhood moments of seeing my dad, you know, uh, take ropes and cut them into three pieces and turn them back into one and, you know, making a small penny turn into a huge penny. And so I, uh, I love this box. So he gave it to me. So we're going to open it today and I'm just going to share a few things in it with you. So I'll turn the uh, camera down here and we can kind of look at it together. Apologies for my messy desk and messy area, but that's just part of where we're at right now. So, um, this is one of those little, uh, American tourister travel boxes from the sixties. You know, you could imagine like a, um, a stewardess in a Pan Am flight carrying one of these. Um, I don't think it's locked. Let's see. Nope. No lock. So we're good. We're in here. Um, what's up, Hillary? What's up, Steve? Um, and Ooh, there we have it. Look at this. So we have uh, a little makeup mirror inside there. This is definitely from the 60s. Look at that ruffled uh, thing around here. And then we have all the goodies here. Now, so I, I've been through this before. Um, Steve, this is better than watching draw the open Al Capone safe. Yeah, there was nothing in there. <laughs> I remember that moment. Does anybody else remember that? Watching that on television. And it was a live TV show where... Um, they were going to open Al Capone's safe and they kept opening doors and whatnot and they got in there and there was nothing in there. Uh, it was the biggest TV letdown ever. Um, so inside here, uh, one of my favorite things inside of this is, look at this. This is my dad's Secret Society of Magicians card. And it's got his number and his signature on it. Um, and this is to certify that the person carrying this card is a lifetime member of the Secret Society of Magicians and Magician in Good Standing. Um, and then there's like a secret oath on the back, but you can't read it. It's like in some kind of hidden ink or something. You have to have like maybe special glasses to read that. Uh, so this is his magician secret oath and a secret card. And I don't know if I can read that or... No, I really can't read it. Like I said, I think you have to have like a secret thing to read the back. Um, ah... This is a fun one right here. <laughs> Great to see you too, Steve. So this is the rope into a handkerchief trick. And I remember him doing this a lot where he would pull out a rope and he'd be like, all right, here's the rope right here, right? And uh, I'm just going to take this rope. And then he would go, Wah -wah! it's a, it's a uh, handkerchief. Um, and of course, you know, it's a little handkerchief inside of a rope. Uh, and so, you you know, you hold up the rope like this. All right, and you cover it with your hands, and you're like, "This is just a rope." And then you say the magic words, and then you go, Whoa -ba! And It's a handkerchief. Look at that. I guess we could put that over our mouths, maybe. It's a, it's a pop-up COVID mask. <laughs> um, what else do we have in here? Let's see. Uh, so my dad. Uh, this is back in the day, you know, when um, magicians wore gloves, and he also did some tricks with gloves. I think uh, some of it was. Um, had to do with like, I remember it was, uh, what are the little things you put on your thimbles, uh, thimbles. Um, so let's see what else we have in, oh, the secret Chinese sticks. Ah, now these are, uh, really, really, uh, really cool sticks. So you can see you have the, uh, two little sticks right here. Now I'm going to pull this down. All right. Now you'll notice, let's see if I can do this on the magic trick that it's, just hanging there, right? So I'm gonna reach over to this other stick right here, and I'm gonna pull it. And look, it pulls up the other one. Oh, how did that happen? Well, maybe I can get it to pull back. Let's see. Oh, I got it to pull back. And then, of course, you show folks, you know, you're like, whoop, 
you know, like, look, they're not connected at the bottom, right? So then I can show that I can take this one and I'm gonna pull it down over here, right? And then it's now, look, it just passes through. How does that work? Oh my goodness. I love these, these little Chinese sticks. Um, then of course, all these foam balls. So, you know, you can do the, hey, I have one ball right here. And now I'm gonna put this one over here. You see one ball, right? And I'm gonna put it in there and then boom, it becomes two balls. <laughs> Again, I'm not a professional magician. Um, oh, this is so good. I can't show you all this stuff in here. Um, but what's, what's funny to me is he did so many of these rope tricks that look, there's all these little cut pieces of rope in here. Um, and he would take, you know, one long rope and cut it into three separate ropes and tie them back together and make it back into one rope. Um, <laughs> I don't think this still works, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. Uh, this was a gift from my father to me. Um, and this is a flaming wallet. So it doesn't have any lighter fluid in it right now, but basically the idea is you pull your wallet out and light it and open it up and the flame shoots out the top. My dad gave this to me as a gift and I was like, are you trying to set my you know pants on fire? Um, and of course, the fun thing about this flame wallet is that you know, it looks like a normal wallet, but on the inside it has, look at that, a little lighter that you can put lighter fluid in and a little uh, spark right here that when you hit that, the flame shoots up the top. <laughs> and of course it's encased in, you know, this uh, brass, so it's supposed to not melt anything, but who knows. Tori, Scott, how are you guys doing? Good to see you. Um, and then of course he had a bunch of coin tricks in here. Um, let's see the, uh, oh yeah, here we go. He would turn a small penny into a giant penny like this. And again, uh, I did my magic trick back at the beginning of this video. So you're gonna have to go back and watch the beginning to see my magic trick. Um, but uh, I always was amazed when he would turn a little tiny penny into a giant penny like this. Uh, let's see what else he's gonna, oh, lots of thimbles. You know, the thimble thing, right? Where you would, uh, you know, put your hand into here and reach it out and go like, you know, all right, is it in here, right? And go, no, it's not. And then, whew, there it is, it's back. Um, am I gonna saw Shannon in half? Yes. Shannon, are you ready to be sawn? We're gonna go do that right now. <laughs> I'm working my way up. Maybe I could, um, you know, make her coffee appear magically. She'd probably be happy with that trick. Um, the other fun thing about this box is that uh, I'm sure, you know, just like a lot of magicians do, they buy magic tricks. Shannon said no, no sawing her in half, but she probably wants coffee. Uh, so magic tricks, they have expos, conferences, et cetera. And they talk about some of that in the book, The Magic is Dead. There's a big magician's conference in uh, Blackpool. Uh, and magicians show off their tricks and then they sell them to other magicians. So what you would get is uh, like a, uh, like you can see kind of here, this whole stack of all these different magics. And so like there's a, let's look through here. There's uh, thimble tricks, all right? So under thimble tricks, you have the thimble thumb palm and it tells you the effect and then it shows you how to do it. And uh, Aaron, how are you doing? Steve, don't worry, I'm not gonna cut Shannon in half. Not today anyways. <laughs> We're getting along. We're getting along so far. Uh, but yeah, it shows you exactly how to do the trick. And this is how, you know, a lot of the um, magicians do that. Most magicians are not, you know, coming up with totally brand new tricks. They're using tricks that are, um, you know, bought and sold. Let's see what else he has in here. Um, some puzzle stuff, some coins. Oh. I have no idea why this is in here, but my dad has a Groucho Marx nose uh, with like a mustache on it. Um, I'm sure that was part of some get up or costume he was doing while he was doing magic. So there's your little nose of the day right there. Uh, 
And, oh, here we go. Oh my goodness, look at these. <laughs> and I think this is what it was part of. Let's see, I think it, uh, it looks like he had hot glued them to here. So there you go, Dad. New profile pick. <laughs> I love it. These probably haven't seen the light of day in, you know, 30 years. Uh, what's up, Jennifer? How you doing? Jennifer Bourbon, uh, the uh, creator of the disco ball at Spark Plaza. Um, so he had disguises in here, too. Um, let's see. If maybe show you one more thing. Oh, yes. The pencil trick. And I don't know if he has all of it in here. But he would take a matchbox and two pencils and he would turn a long pencil into a short pencil uh with a matchbox and i don't see the matchbox in here but i remember that trick as well that was such a cool cool moment and again this to me when i got this it was like you could go on youtube or amazon or whatever and buy all this stuff and but for me it was more about feeling and i have <laughs> mustache hair in my mouth now from that nose. Um, but for me, it was more about the secrets of what were in the box and opening it. Now I'm like, well, there's not anything really um, magical in here, but it was the magic that I remember from the moment and my dad creating that. And um, so this is great memories for me to be able to open this up and, and look through some of the fun things in here. Um, Ooh, look at this. It's a set list. Look at that. So this is a set list from one of his show shows. Um, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, so for me, like I said, this was about um, great memories. And then realizing that once I got the box, the box and what was in it wasn't the magical part. It was what my dad did with it and how he told stories and how he created a moment and a memory for somebody. So um, for me, I think that's a good reminder that when we're looking at things, objects, whatever you like, man, I got to have the latest, greatest, this, whatever. It's not necessarily the tools that you have. It's what you do with them. It's how you impact somebody else's life with it. So, um, that was a good reminder for me, but I love opening this and maybe I'll share some more stuff with you at some point if you guys want to, want to see more. Um, but for now, I think we're going to close the little magic box up here put it back up on the shelf. Oh, if I can get it to close. There we go. Um, so final thought, uh, happy birthday to Dave Tolson, my father-in-law. I just posted on Facebook, so you ought to go check that out. Um, big happy birthday to him. And uh, yes, Morgan King. Ta-da! There we go. It's a close the box. He did it. Um, if you want to see my magic trick, go back to the beginning of the video and you can see um, I made my favorite global entrepreneurship pin disappear. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, stay spicy out there. I know it's uh, interesting times right now, um, but choose optimism. I promise you, if you choose to be positive, hope will come and hope is what can lead us forward. So I love you guys so much. Any questions? Anybody's got, got any questions about either the book or my dad's secret box of magician? Uh, oh, Brian Sharp. There you go, Brian. How are you doing? Donna, good to see you. Or Donna, sorry. Um, so if you guys got any questions about uh, Jennifer, let's see, that's a nice little case, and happy birthday to your father-in-law. Thank you. Dave Tolson's an awesome dude. I got, uh, I got a really good father-in-law, and I told him I'm taking him golfing anywhere he wants to go. Whenever we get back out of this crazy thing, I'm going to take him golfing, and uh, so we're going to have fun. Um, so any other questions about either my dad and his secret case or magic or the book? If you got any other questions of the book, um, you have an amazing dad. You're an incredible dad. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate it. Morgan, Pebble Beach. Hmm. I don't know. If he requests Pebble Beach, we'll see. We'll have to uh, put that into the post-COVID uh, travel calculator and see if we can make that happen. What's up, Logan? How are you doing, man? Uh, Brian's thinking about whipping out the bagpipes and marching through downtown. Dude, please. I would love to hear some bagpipes right now. Uh, Brian Sharp, good friend of mine, uh, is an amazing bag, bagpipe player, musician, uh, plays a lot of different instruments, and a great teacher as well. Betty, how are you doing? Good to see you. 
Um, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my attempt at a magic, magic trick. Um, and uh, check out the book, Magic is Dead. Let me know what you think about it. And also go check out Chris Ramsey. I'm going to post uh, a magic video of his. He's got a great um, YouTube channel and does puzzle boxes, which I really love puzzles as well. Uh, so I'm going to share some more info on, on, on Chris as well. Um, and then my dad is going to be doing a live stream on Facebook on Monday. So make sure you tune in for that. We're going to be doing some sand story live. And I think I might be helping him out with that, doing some content moderation stuff. Um, we will have to pay the piper more than, you know, and Brian, he's a really good piper. So we're going to have to pay him well. <laughs> Well, guys, have a spicy day. I love it. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a little magic added to your life today. And, and again, choose optimism. And I look forward to seeing you guys uh, in the next episode of The Flavor. My goal is to really do something every day. Share uh, some, uh, some love and some optimism with you guys um, Monday through Friday. So five days a week, that's the plan. Uh, oh, Bristol Motor Speedway is this weekend. So Sunday... At 10 a.m., um, I'm going to be going live on Bristol's Instagram live story. And then I'm going to be also bringing in Hannah uh, and Ashley, who are two other co-hosts up on Colossus TV with me. And we're going to share uh, just some favorite Bristol moments and talk about um, eSports. And uh, again, there is a Bristol race. It's an iRacing race. But man, it's been fun and exciting to watch. And that will be uh, Sunday at one o'clock, uh, the Food City Showdown, I do believe is uh, what they're calling it. So I'm excited about that. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys uh, on that. So that's Sunday, 10 a.m. on Instagram Live. Monday for my dad's uh, Facebook stream. And then my plan is probably around 10 a.m. every day to do a fun little video. And I'm going to be posting that up on... Uh, uh, what's up, Joel, all the way from Canada? Uh, I'm going to be posting that up on my YouTube channel as well. So you can go back and watch them all there. Uh, thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. Uh, I feel like I need be needing to wear my cowboy hat. It's in the other room, Jerry. I'll wear my cowboy hat for you next time around. <laughs> um, oh, and one final thing. I love this. There's always one more thing. Spark Plaza is doing a Zoom lunch today and anybody's welcome to join us. It's going to be noon Eastern time. Uh, we're going to post it on Spark Plaza's Facebook page. Uh, so Spark Plaza, just type it in and you can come join us for lunch and we're going to show off our dogs, cats, what we're eating for lunch, our workspaces and just have some fun there. Uh, so uh, you're welcome to come join us at noon for that. So love you guys. Have a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you all. Stay spicy. Choose optimism.